Why do you read? Even though you've probably been doing it for a long time, do you know the right way to read? I read because it gives me a window into worlds that I wouldn't otherwise experience. Even when I read about things that are familiar, the author's unique perspective paints a picture I couldn't otherwise see. When I read, even when I read for information, but also when I read for pleasure, I draw on my entire background, encompassing my past into the present that is the book in my hands. So my reading experience is also uniquely my own, and I make references and find parallels in text that might not connect for another reader. But that's just me. Why do you read, and how do you do it? I love the beginning paragraphs of this book by Harold Bloom, so I thought I would share a few lines of it with you. How to read and why. There is no single way to read well, though there is a prime reason why we should read. Information is endlessly available to us. Where shall wisdom be found? If you're fortunate, you encounter a particular teacher who can help. Yet finally, you're alone, going on without further mediation. Reading well is one of the great pleasures that solitude can afford you, because it is, at least in my experience, the most healing of pleasures. It returns you to otherness, whether in yourself or in friends, or in those who may become friends. Imaginative literature is otherness, and as such alleviates loneliness. We read not only because we cannot know enough people, but because friendship is so vulnerable, so likely to diminish or disappear, overcome by space, time, imperfect sympathies, and all the sorrows of familial and passional life. It matters if individuals are to retain any capacity to form their own judgments and opinions that they continue to read for themselves. How they read, well or badly, and what they read cannot depend wholly upon themselves, but why they read must be for and in their own interest. You could read merely to pass the time, or you could read with an overt urgency, but eventually you will read against the clock. Bible readers, those who search the Bible for themselves, perhaps exemplify the urgency more plainly than readers of Shakespeare, yet the quest is the same. One of the uses of reading is to prepare ourselves for change, and the final change, alas, is universal. As Sir Francis Bacon said, read not to contradict and confute, nor to believe and take for granted, nor to find talk and discourse, but to weigh and consider. In her essay, How Should One Read a Book? Virginia Woolf warns, the only advice indeed that one person can give another about reading is to take no advice. Thanks for watching this video anyway. Leave me a comment down below about why you read. And if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and share this video with someone else. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.